My first price target for the primary native token of the VeChain platform called VET in 2025 is 50 cents. And even though nothing I say is financial advice nor guarantee, the reason why is because I think that VeChain is arguably one of the best projects out there. However, it should be taken into consideration. When it comes to the VeChain platform, it actually consists of two distinct tokens. The first being, of course, VET, which I just mentioned before. Now, this is used to transfer value across the network. While on the flip side, there is something called VSO. Now, VSO stands for VeChain Thor Energy, like Thor, you know, from the Avengers movie. But even besides that, even though some people may think it's kind of corny, VSO is used for gas fees. However, it should be taken into consideration, though, that both VET and VSO are used on something called the VeChain Thor blockchain, which I think is very amazing. But before I get into that, I do want to mention how, you know, the purpose of this video is for VET and not VSO, which is why I'm focusing exclusively on VET, but I just wanted to mention VSO nonetheless. But even besides that, if you take a look at the VeChain Thor blockchain, it's arguably considered one of the most reliable ones out there because while well, we've seen, you know, something like Solana, at one point, experienced eight different network outages in just a time span of a year, which at that time, granted, was very embarrassing, but they fixed that. But even besides that, you know, these are issues that you don't see with the VeChain Thor blockchain. Again, ever since 2018, it has experienced a total of zero network outages. That's so impressive. I mean, that's pretty much almost unheard of, but that's how reliable, you know, the VeChain Thor blockchain is. I think it's arguably one of the best out there, super reliable. Also on top of that, you take into consideration how VeChain, it's focused on a niche that really doesn't have, you know, too much attention as of right now. That's the supply chain management market because you take a look at how, of course, they're primarily focused on supply chain management. And if you take a look at that market size, it's predicted to be worth over $58 billion by 2030, according to Polaris Market Research. So yeah, that's insane. You know, if you really think about it, they're focused on such an amazing market now, some people may argue that, hey, you know, they're focused on a market that's not big enough. And they think that, oh, when it comes to VET going to like a $60 billion market cap, how can it even, you know, surpass the market that they're focused on? But I think sometimes people often ignore, you know, the potential FOMO, right? Also, they ignore that, you know, when this retail hype really does kick in for VET, you know, it goes beyond just the market that they're focused on. But even besides that, it showcases that even still, they have a right focus, they have the right approach. But again, in the world of cryptocurrencies, you take a look at, for instance, something like Dogecoin, you know, where they focused on necessarily a market that had like, you know, 50, 60 billion dollar, you know, potential. No, they're just a meme coin. But you take a look at how Doge at one point reached over 80 billion. So when people like to say that, oh, wow, VET can't go to like a 60 billion, 70 billion dollar market cap because the market that VeChain is focused on is not even that big. No, I disagree because, again, when you combine the market that they're focused on, when you combine their fundamentals, and also when you combine the potential FOMO and buying pressure, really the sky's the limit. So again, I don't think it'd be crazy. But even besides that, you take a look at how when it comes to VeChain, its partnerships are A+. You take a look at, for instance, their partners with PricewaterhouseCoopers. You know, that's one of the big four accounting firms, but they're also partnered with another, you know, big four accounting firm, which is Deloitte. You know, that's massive. We take a look at Walmart China, BMW, you know, H&M, we all know that. We all know Louis Vuitton, Moet Hennessy, that's massive. And even the government of Cyprus. So really, anyway, take a look at it. I think that when it comes to VeChain, it's pretty much a complete project. Now, with all that being said, though, right, what is amazing fundamentals without fantastic A-plus leadership? It's kind of almost nothing in a sense, because we see a lot of good projects out there. You know, they have amazing fundamentals, but the leadership is complete caca, so they can't really evolve. But when it comes to V chain, their leadership is amazing. You take a look at, for instance, their CEO is Sonny Liu. And no, he's not related to me, but even besides that, you know, he's the former CEO of Louis Vuitton China. So that's amazing. You also take a look at Jay Zhang. He's also not related to me, but he's a CFO and he's a former, you know, employee at Deloitte and Pricewaterhouse Coopers, again, aka PWC. So yeah, when you take a look at V chain, team is A plus focus on the right market, amazing fundamentals when it comes to the VeChain Thor blockchain. Really, anyway, take a look at it. You know, VET at the price of 50 cents, is that too crazy? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's insane at all. You know, I think it's very special. And I think that when it comes to VeChain, it's arguably one of the best projects out there, not financial advice, of course. 
Now, my second price target for VET is $0.75. Cents. Now, some people may think, okay, this is a little bit crazy because they may think that $0.50 cents was a lot, let alone $0.75. Cents. But I disagree because if, let's say, it were to go to the price of $0.75, cents, considering its current circulating supply, you know, at that point, market cap would be around $60 billion. Not too bad. I mean, think about this, right? Again, just like I mentioned earlier on the video, we've seen Dogecoin reach over, you know, $80 billion. We've seen SHIB reach around $40 billion. Now, granted, this is way more than SHIB, but if you consider in the grand scheme of things, it's actually not too bad. Also, on top of that, we've seen BNB reach over $100 billion in market cap. And come on, right? You take a look at just last year. According to Crypto.com research, slightly over 2% of the crypto hacks that happened actually occurred on the BNB smart chain ecosystem. Again, according to Crypto.com research. You know, we have to take this into consideration. The crypto space overall is massive. It's not like it's so small where like 2% really doesn't mean much. No, it's kind of a lot. So I think it's very unacceptable. If BNB can reach over 100 billion, if Doge can reach over 80 billion, why can't VET at least go to around 60 billion, right? It's not even that much more than SHIB, really. SHIB is just, again, around 40 billion. So it's not too much to ask for. So again, VET at the price of 75 cents, I don't think it'd be too crazy. You know, it's not unrealistic whatsoever, in my opinion. Now, my next and final price target is, of course, VET at the price of a dollar, which if you've been watching my videos for quite a while now, you'll know that this is my most bullish case price target scenario. And the reason for that is because on top of everything I just mentioned before, I do believe that this bull run could be so special. And I think it's really going to elevate VET to just such an insane level. Because if you take a look at it as of right now, you know, there's over 600 million crypto owners. That's more than ever before in history. Yet again, according to crypto.com research. Also on top of that, you take a look at the Bitcoin ETF the number of institutional investors. I mean, all of this is very amazing news, very bullish for cryptos just in general. And I think as Bitcoin does reach greater heights, like 100,000, 150,000, I don't see why VET won't go along with the ride because, you know, it's only natural, right? Altcoins are going to join. I think VET is going to join as well because I think it's one of the best out there. So I don't see why not. At that point, right, let's say Bitcoin goes to the price of 150,000. Why is VET at the price of a dollar too much to ask for? Now also take this into consideration. Back in 2021, there was roughly only around 300 million crypto owners. So now we basically have like double that amount. I think all the action that we saw back then pretty much is going to be amplified in such a fantastic way. So can a dollar for VET during this bull run wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. And now this type of stuff isn't going to happen like today or like, you know, two weeks ago or whatever, right? That's usually not how it works. And now why did I actually title this video 2025 price targets? It's because usually altcoins, they've been known to peak as a worst case scenario around 18 months after a Bitcoin halving event, which would mean actually around October of 2025. But on the flip side, best case has been actually around six months. So again, based off of April, the last Bitcoin halving event, that would be around October this year. Now, granted, these are very like extreme scenarios. One's like super best case, one's like worst case. Let's see, we take, you know, a middle ground approach, a year, 12 months. That's still April of 2025, which is why I tell this video, you know, 2025 price targets. I'm taking more of a middle ground approach Yes, again, could it happen a little bit sooner? Of course, could it happen later? Yes. Now, history doesn't always repeat itself, but it tends to rhyme. So that's why I'm going off this date. But even besides that, no matter the time frame, I've been acquiring VET for quite a while now anyways. So if it happens early, fine. If it happens a little bit later, fine. You know, more time for me to accumulate. So anyway, it's okay. You know, even though I've already accumulated a lot, I don't mind accumulating some more. That's just the way I view it. And now, of course, my buying strategy is very simple. You know, after all, if you've been watching my videos for quite a while now, you'll know that my buying strategy is dollar cost averaging. So anytime an income, I'm acquiring, I'm holding, and I'm just waiting. That's it. I'm not focused on some random, you know, stuff like day trading, using leverage, or, you know, trying to swing trade. That's just not my style. You know, I just don't like to do that. I view myself as a very simple individual. I like to keep things simple. I'm a practical guy. That's the way I take a look at it. And the way I view it is that what's a more practical strategy than dollar cost averaging? I think that's pretty much it. That's why I do that. Again, any time an income, acquire, hold, and just wait. That's it. Because I think that sometime in 2025, things could look so different. It's just a matter of time, though, which is why I'm focusing on things that are within my control, like just acquiring my dedication, my belief. And I think that given some time, you know, things will truly showcase what they're capable of. And again, if at the price of a dollar during this bull run, wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. I think this boron could be so special. I think VeChain is also very special as well. And I think that Bitcoin could reach great heights. I think that right there is kind of like a perfect recipe for a hypothetically 
you know, figuratively speaking, right, perfect storm, which is why I can fed at the price of a dollar during this bull run wouldn't surprise me at all. I think it's that amazing. And make sure to subscribe if you gain value from this video. I greatly appreciate it. It's Billy the Captain. I'll catch y'all on the next one. I'm up. Peace. Bye.